Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to your first video on cryptocurrency for this channel. Today, we're gonna to be teaching you how to buy Bitcoin and the things you need to know before you lose all your money. Now, before buying Bitcoin, make sure you understand all of the risks. That way you don't lose everything you own and your family abandons you and you have to live homeless for the rest of your life. You don't want that. I don't want that for you, so pay attention here. But before we get started, welcome to Currency. My name is Caleb Curry, and this channel is all about personal finance, investing, and cryptocurrencies, and various other things like that. So if you enjoy that type of content, please be sure to slap that subscribe button. So just to get everybody on the same page, Bitcoin is a digital currency, or more properly known as a cryptocurrency. The crypto part of it comes from cryptographic stuff in the creation of Bitcoin, but we don't need to worry about that stuff in this video. We just need to know how do we buy it and how do we use it? It works just like any other currency, but there's some key differences that make them pretty much completely different, if that helps. Specifically, it's built on a distributed database known as a blockchain, and we're gonna create content on how that works. But what's important to understand from that in this video is that it's not backed by a central authority. There's no government saying, hey, Bitcoin has value. There's no bank used for transferring Bitcoin or for savings accounts or whatever. When you have Bitcoin and you have it in your own Bitcoin wallet, you own that Bitcoin and you are the sole person responsible for protecting it. So if you mess something up, say goodbye to all of your life worth. Is that a word, life worth? The only other thing you really should know is that when you transfer Bitcoin, it is direct. So when I give you Bitcoin or Let's say you give me Bitcoin, it goes from you to me. It doesn't go through a bank or any kind of transferring service or some kind of company. No, it goes right to me. And the value of this is that we don't have to trust or rely on any third party services such as banks. Now, right now, Bitcoin is worth around $7,000, but I'm really curious and kind of excited to look back at this video 10 years from now and see what the price of Bitcoin is because it could be worth 70,000. It could be worth 70, we have no idea. And I always love that watching other videos on YouTube, seeing the price difference from when they uploaded it to what it is now. But fortunately, if you don't have $7,000 laying around, I mean, who does, then you can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. You don't have to buy one whole Bitcoin. You can buy like $10 worth of Bitcoin, for example. So even if you're broke as a joke like me, there's still hope you can do this. The other question we should address, is Bitcoin a currency or is it an investment. Do we use it to buy and sell things or do we use it like stocks? Well, it's probably like somewhere in between, but I would say it's more appropriate to think of it as a currency used to buy and trade. And people are using it as an investment in a similar way you would trade currencies from different countries by exchanging. And also people are hoping that the price of Bitcoin goes up and up and up and they get a return if they're doing like a buy and hold strategy of investing. But this video, we're focusing on the more transactional part of Bitcoin. So how do you get Bitcoin and how do you sell Bitcoin or transfer Bitcoin or whatever? If you do hope to get into the more investment side of Bitcoin, I am gonna touch on that at the end, give some tips for that, and we'll have more content on that in the future. So be sure to subscribe. Buying Bitcoin is actually extremely simple and you can get started with a website, Coinbase. You can also use their application if you prefer to do it on a mobile device. Now, when you sign up, you're probably gonna have to give some information about you and probably take a picture of like a driver's license or something like that. And this is because of KYC laws, know your customer. So Coinbase is required to know who they are selling cryptocurrencies to. It doesn't take a real long while, but you do have to get approved or verified or whatever. So that might take 10 minutes, an hour, a day. I don't know, it took me like 10 minutes. Coinbase actually offers two services. So one is a service to trade your dollars for Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency. It's very simple. Then there is also Coinbase Pro and when you say pro, you think you might have to pay a monthly subscription, but actually it's saying pro because it's more for professional users or people who want to use Bitcoin for trading. And that's a little bit more complicated. I suggest you start out with the, the broker-like service that you just buy your Bitcoin and then transfer it to your wallet. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video. In upcoming videos, I will be showing you how to use Coinbase Pro. I personally started with the simple version. I think it's the best way to get started and it doesn't add anything that's too complicated to understand if you're a beginner. So the Pro version is an exchange and then the simple version 
is more like a broker. And if you're wondering the difference between an exchange and a broker, I actually, I, I don't super know. Now, anytime you buy or sell Bitcoin, there's going to be fees, which is super lame, but you, such is life. Ideally, you buy all the Bitcoin you need up front, and that'll cap your fees to like $3, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. And then also, when you want to exchange your Bitcoin for USD or whatever other currency you guys use, there will also be a fee for that as well. Now, if you buy Bitcoin from Coinbase in exchange, you have the option of leaving your Bitcoin in your account. So you sign into, into Coinbase and you can see your balance there. And although this works, it's not entirely recommended for large amounts because the if you remember back to what you're we saying, the value of Bitcoin is not having to rely on a third party. Well, in this situation, Coinbase, the exchange is acting as that third party. We are entrusting them with our money. And there's actually been a lot of exchanges that have been hacked. Money has been stolen and people's lives were ruined. Now, various exchanges have insurances or whatever, but still, I don't want to deal with that. Once you get your money from Coinbase, I like to take it off of Coinbase and store it in something known as a wallet. There's tons of wallets out there, but you can get apps on your phone. That's probably the simplest to get started with. And if you're working with large amounts, you can actually get little devices, which the category of these devices is known as cold storage. In other words, they don't touch the internet. And that's the safest way to store large amounts of cryptocurrency. Now, I'm almost there. I'm gonna show you guys in just a minute, but here are just my key warnings to know before you spend anything on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is experimental. I'm not saying that from my perspective, the Bitcoin website says it's experimental and also says that on the Bitcoin repo in GitHub, they don't know the future of it. Nobody knows the future of it, so be warned. Again, exchanges have been hacked, people have lost money, so be careful with exchanges. Make sure you're using a reputable one like Coinbase. Bitcoin transactions are irreversible. So if I send you money, I can't go to someone and be like, oh, I got scammed, ah, oh, it's permanent. The only way to get my money back is if you sent that money back to me, which would be a new transaction. It's not undoing the previous transaction, it's just making a new one of you giving me back the money. So it's kind of like there's a permanent history on the Bitcoin blockchain. So a lot of people in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency space just wanna see the current financial system just collapse and the world go into chaos and then we rebuild it using cryptocurrency. But what they're not realizing is that banks actually offer a service. So when we get rid of the banks, we're basically taking that service and doing it in-house, which is ourself. So that service is protecting our money. So you are now responsible for the money and that makes it much more riskier if you don't know what you're doing. Fourth is that the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market is probably the most scammy industry. People are losing their money all of the time, so just be careful. <laughs> That's all I can say. I mean, it's so hard to just say be careful because it's so easy to fall for a scam and people do it all of the time. So just really be vigilant and don't let your guard down. Fifth one is that not everyone takes Bitcoin. You might actually be surprised about the number of companies that do take Bitcoin, like everyday companies, but it's not worldwide. You can't go to Walmart or maybe you can. I don't, can does Walmart take Bitcoin? I doubt it. But if you wanna see an interesting video on this, there's this guy, Ryan Trahan, who tried to basically survive using only Bitcoin. Check that video out and that's a whole lot of fun. Uh, lastly, there's something called ICOs or initial coin offerings. And this is where most of the scams come from. So I just wanted to warn you guys of this. It's basically a way to invest your money into new cryptocurrencies and it can work. People have made a lot of money, but a lot of them are scams. Basically, they come up with this business idea and get you to invest, to try to get this new cryptocurrency and then they take your money and disappear. So. Don't, don't even go into that until you know what you're doing. <laughs> like, I don't even wanna do that because I'm scared, but we'll, we'll do that soon. Now, I'm gonna actually show you how to buy the Bitcoin. Honestly, I'm just gonna steal the, the tutorial from another YouTuber and just throw it in here. No, I'm just playing, guys. This is from my other channel. I created this video, so <laughs> don't, uh, don't flag me. Uh, basically, I just wanted to give you some extra information and this will be the bulk of the tutorial. And then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about investing. So I decided I'm gonna do this with the app. You could also do it on the computer if you would prefer, just go into coinbase.com. Uh, but I'm gonna be setting up an account for my lovely wife, who is right here. Hello. <laughs> uh, because I already have an account and you have to do the identity stuff. So I just figured 
I'd do one for her. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download Coinbase. And while we're here, we're also going to download a wallet app. So we're going to use the Coinbase wallet as well. It's this one right here. So this is the wallet and this is the exchange. Give those a moment to download. So we'll start with Coinbase and you're just going to get started. Fill in your information. It'll ask for a little bit more information. Apparently, I don't know anything about myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having some issues with the, the questions and answers. I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but we'll switch over to my Coinbase account and I'll show you from there. So on my account, you can see I have a balance of $5.80. Yeah, I know, I got a lot of crypto. So down here in the corner, there's the settings. That's where you can get a little bit of extra information about your account. Specifically in here, you can see your account level, which you can select and see the different things you can do based on what level your account is. So to get level one, you have to verify your phone number. To get level two, you have to verify your personal information. And level three, you have to verify your photo ID. Now let's say you wanna buy one of these cryptocurrencies. You can just scroll through, find the one you want, Bitcoin. And oh, it looks like the price is tanking there. So that's good. We can buy. We're gonna buy Bitcoin. And then you just put a dollar amount and you can see one time purchase. And it will tell you how many Bitcoins you can get for the amount of USD you used. Then you select buy now. It gives you the options to set up weekly or monthly investments. I'm gonna select not now. <laughs> and now you can see my balance for Bitcoin. I have $52.35. So we got the Bitcoin, but it's still in the exchange. So this is the point where you can transfer it to a wallet. So inside of a wallet app, you have to probably create a wallet. So create a new wallet. Make sure you read those things and you can choose a username. Now in your wallet, you'll have the option to set up a recovery phrase. This is a very important step if you want to secure your funds, but we'll do that later because you know, <laughs> you want to do that though if you ever wanna gain access to this wallet, if you lose your phone or something happens. So if you wanna do that again, after you exit out of that, just click this gear down here and you can see the recovery phrase option right here. So to receive coins in your wallet, all you gotta do is select receive, select the Bitcoin, and this is your public address. So this app over here can use the QR code or it can use your public address, which is this long string down here. So you can send your Bitcoin from the app, going into your portfolio, selecting Bitcoin, selecting Bitcoin wallet, and then this little send button. And we'll just transfer $10. Next. You're giving me $10? Yep. And here you can put this address or you can do the QR code option. And there you go. Once you finish this, just click next and confirm the send. And notice there is a network fee, so the actual total is a little bit higher than what we're actually going to get on this side. So confirm the send. And over on here, we can go back to our homepage and we'll need to wait a little bit. Now, if you are using the Coinbase wallet, you can easily transfer directly from your Coinbase exchange account just by going into the wallet app, going into the settings and selecting your Coinbase account and selecting transfer. Here you can choose your cryptocurrency and make the transfer a lot easier. Now the Coinbase app is a little tricky to navigate, but if you wanna see those transactions, all you have to do is go into your portfolio, scroll down to Bitcoin, Scroll down to Bitcoin wallet, and then you can see these transactions down here in the history. So you can see right here where I just sent that money and it says pending. And you can see it just popped up here. Took about maybe 10 minutes or so. So not the end of the world, but definitely not instantaneous. And if you're wondering why the values keep changing, like I transferred 10 from this one to this one, but it's 10.08 right here. Well, that's because this goes off of the current value of Bitcoin, which changes all of the time. So if you go to the homepage here, you can see the portfolio balance is regularly changing. Now I wanna try it again with another cryptocurrency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try Bitcoin Cash. So I'll just buy a little bit of this and we're gonna get $10. Buy now. And there we go. And then what we can do is we can send it and I'm just gonna do $5. I'm gonna keep a little bit in my exchange. And then again, we'll just scan that QR code. So we'll click receive over here and we're going to receive Bitcoin Cash. 
So we'll just scan that. And you probably want to confirm that code right there, but you can leave a note there if you want. We'll just say next and we'll confirm the send. And now we'll go back to our balance over here and see if it will update. You can see this one is pending now because we just transferred it, but you can see that Bitcoin has now been confirmed and there's no longer a pending there. Now you can also transfer from wallet to wallet. So I can send here, I can receive here, let's say Bitcoin, and we'll send one Bitcoin. Oh, one Bitcoin, I mean, <laughs> that'd be nice. One dollar worth of Bitcoin, click next, scan QR code. There we go, and send. So that is how you can directly transfer money from one wallet to another. So if you're trying to buy something from someone, you can do it like that. And also our Bitcoin Cash just appeared, and you can see our cryptocurrency appeared on this wallet. So now the last thing I need to do is just go in here and set a recovery phrase so I don't go and lose all my money. So that's the basics of getting the cryptocurrency from the exchange and transferring it to your wallet. So that's it guys, hopefully this was helpful. Now if you wanna get inv into investing, here are a couple of tips I have for you. One is that we're going to get into this a lot in the future because I'm still fairly new to it, just so you guys know upfront. Uh, but the key things, and you'll hear these in a lot of videos, is that there's two real types of investing. There's buy and hold, which is you buy a cryptocurrency and hope it goes up in value, or you believe it's gonna go up in value, and then you can sell it later for a profit or use it in exchange for goods. And then there is active trading. So this is like what day traders do. You might make numerous transactions a day or once a week or whatever it might be to basically buy high, no, it's the other way around, buy low, <laughs> sell high, and make a profit, and you just repeat that process. For active trading, your resources are going to need to be on that exchange, but if you're going the buy and hold route, then again, make sure you're using some form of cold storage so you don't have all of your money at risk. If, if you're just storing hundreds of thousands worth of cryptocurrency, you need to make sure that is secure. However you do that, look up how to protect cryptocurrency or how to not get it stolen. There's probably tons of different stuff you can do. Some people will spread it out across the world or put keys inside of a lockbox somewhere or whatever it can be. Just make sure you don't have your life savings in, in one place that is a liability. Cold storage is less of a liability, but it can still be risky if your house burns down or someone steals it or whatever it might be. Again, keep in mind, I can't express this enough, it's experimental. Yeah, it's sustained its value pretty well. I mean, it, it doubles and halves, but it's been in this decent range and it's sustained itself. But we do not know the future of Bitcoin. And anytime you can't really see the future, it's a higher risk thing. Obviously, investing, we never really know the future, but Bitcoin, we really don't know the future. So invest at your own risk. And last is do not invest in anything you're not willing to lose because you might actually lose it. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Just be patient with your investing and also be weary of investment pros like myself by my course. <laughs> I'm just playing. Don't got one yet, but maybe someday in the future. But there's just so many scams. You could probably go read the comments in this video and see 30,000 Bitcoin experts that they met on Facebook or whatever. So don't check out the comments. Leave some genuine comments though, and if you want to know anything else, just leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what kind of content you'd like to see, and thank you guys so much for watching. Also, um, I will leave my wallet info in the description if you guys want to uh, send me any Bitcoin, if you're just practicing transactions or whatever, you know. Thank you guys, and peace out.